Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my journey to sustainable health and meaningful success. If you're coming back and you've already subscribed, welcome back. Y'all are my people and I love you so much. And if you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing by the end of this video. I talk about my health journey on Sundays and I talk about anti-MLM and meaningful success on Wednesdays. So today I am getting into a topic of something that I've just been like sitting here in my car for like 20 minutes just thinking about because I've been triggered and I know I use that word often even though I don't use that word lightly which is kind of like maybe a reflection on like where I'm at mentally because for me to be triggered it has to be something that's like dang you hit a nerve and it was deep and um and this did it really did to be honest um, so I was listening to an Amway LTD audio. I was a part of Amway LTD for two and a half years. If you haven't seen my story on my channel, I, um, would hope that you would check it out because, um, honestly, I think Amway LTD and all of the other like subgroups within Amway are probably the most cult like MLMs out there, like legitimately, um, but I was listening to an audio because, long story short, I renewed my Amway subscription because I'm working on a project that I will talk about at some point, possibly this summer. Um, but I listened to this audio called The Margin of Shame. And I will spare you the reaction because I tried to film it and I just can't. I'm actually like sitting out in my driveway because I was in my living room trying to react to this audio and I, I couldn't, I couldn't. Um, and so I've been like dissecting my thoughts for the last few minutes. So I apologize if this video seems scattered, but here's the gist of the audio. The margin of shame is the margin between what you are capable of doing and what you are currently doing. And the word potential is not a good word in the Amway business. Potential is actually a burden because it means it's all the stuff that you're not doing. All that you could be, but you aren't. And he goes on to say that your real identity is found in the margin of shame. And how he thinks that a lot of people in the audience, a lot of people that he was talking to haven't actually found their real identity yet. And it'll be found in that margin of shame. So as you minimize your margin, you maximize yourself. And he goes on to talk about how this isn't a materialistic business. This is about investing in people and how we spread hope. Without the business, we don't have hope, but with the business, we have hope. And when we're working the business, we have hope. And this audio, um, like I just saved you like 30 minutes of listening to this guy ramble on, but this audio struck a nerve with me for a lot of reasons. Um, number one, when I got into business, I did not have a sense of identity whatsoever. I had just dropped out of college. If you are not new to my channel, you know this already. So I was like, just coming out of a depression, really just at my most vulnerable state. And that's where they found me. And they gave me this book, The Greatest Miracle in the World. They told me that I had value, that I was created for a purpose, that, you know, Jesus loves me and all of that. So with that being said, as we've been going over for the past like couple of videos, um, I'm just now getting back to even like kind of exploring spirituality slash religion slash relationship with God because I was in Amway LTD for two and a half years and had a lot of my identity wrapped up in Amway, wrapped up in my mentors and my mentorship, wrap, wrapped up in the community that I had there and the friends that I had there. And so when I left um, you know, the process of leaving was really brutal. And I talk a lot about that on my channel. So, um, so my identity was just kind of like, just completely demolished, <laughs> uh, let alone my relationship with God, any sort of religious affiliation. It was just 
completely just cut. Um, and so it's taken me like in July, it'll be two years, <laughs> uh, to finally like get a grip on myself and start finding who I am. And I know I'm going to, um, talk about this a little bit more on Sunday cause I recorded the video today, um, because I'm processing a lot. Clearly this is nothing new. Um, so talking about your identity, your real identity, you haven't found your real identity yet until you start chipping away at the margin of shame. And when you minimize the margin of shame, when you do more for the business, when you fulfill your potential for the business, that's when you will find your real self. And even the term, the margin of shame is very, uh, aggravating because Amway LTD is a religious organization. I don't know if they really claim to be that, but that's what it is. On Sunday mornings, every single conference, they do a church service, a non-denominational church service, and um, they sprinkle in religion and religious uh, phrases all throughout their audios, all throughout everything. Um, even their like literature, they have a system of literature. If they're going to try to manipulate you, they give you a religious book. So religion is like throughout. So when I left Amway, I, I left religion basically. <laughs> and it has actually been frankly nice because at this point I'm like, not really sure how much of a relationship with God I've ever had. Um, I know a lot about the Bible, but really just not so sure about the whole religious, like about the genuineness of my faith. Um, but I know that I have struggled with shame a lot throughout my religious years. Um, I, I was just, I was ashamed of everything. I mean, I was paranoid of going to hell. I was paranoid of messing up. And like, I think that's a lot of people's religious experience is shame. Um, and when I left religion and when I just, I mean, I just decided to stop going to church, stop doing the whole, like acting like I'm holy kind of thing. And that actually released a lot of shame <laughs> out of my life. And Frankly, I've done some pretty shameless things, but I think that that's honestly when I let go of that morality of like, oh, I should be ashamed of myself. I should hide this part of myself because it's not worthy. It's not holy. It's not whatever. Um, I think the word shame for me is such a big like trigger. <laughs> It really is. And so for for him to call it the margin of shame was like, I don't know if that's what you mean to say, but that's what you are putting into your audience. <laughs> uh, you are, you're telling them that they should be ashamed of what they're not doing in the business. Because, and this is something that, you know, I've used the term value, know your worth, um, know your identity so often that almost like those words kind of have lost a little bit of meaning for me. So I'm like, all right, let's rephrase this. Like, what is, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to rephrase it, but you know, basically like what makes you worthwhile? What makes you, what gives you purpose? Like why? what is your why? And if your only why is to build the Amway business, and your only purpose, your only value <laughs> um, is what you can contribute to your uplines business, that is just sad. And honestly, that margin of what you're capable of doing in the Amway business versus what you currently are doing, um, that could be your margin of friendship your margin of family, your margin of parenting, your margin of uh, working, your margin of keeping healthy, your margin of sleep, your margin of enjoying your passions, 
your margin of volunteering, your margin of any, like anything outside of what you can do to build the business, um, that still adds worth, that still adds value to your experience as a human, even though you are not doing the most for your business, that should not be shameful. Even if it's the margin of chilling, it's the margin of watching TV. It's the margin of crocheting a scarf. It's the margin of cooking a really good meal. Um, you know, it's just, I think that that to put shame on people for not putting their all into the business is like, oh my God, wow. I can't, and, and the thing is, is that now looking back, now actually reflecting back and seeing that they picked me up when I was my most vulnerable and they gave me a new identity. They gave me the book Wired That Way, which talks about personality types. They told me what my personality was. I tied between sanguine and melancholy. Sanguine is like the fun, happy, outgoing one. And melancholy is the more serious, more straightforward, organized, um, very introverted one. And because I lit up in that Amway environment, because I was so like socially um, bankrupt, like I was just really in a bad place when I got into Amway and because I was so like excitable in the um in that social atmosphere they they termed me as a sanguine like that was it it, it is what it is like I took the test I was like mm, I kind of feel more melancholy but they're like no you're a sanguine you're definitely a sanguine and then they treated me like a sanguine which meant that they kind of belittled me because um, I had moments of not understanding what was going on or not understanding what my upline was talking about. Um, and so I think that this is just kind of bringing up a lot of like ugh, wounds. <laughs> Dang. Oh, I hate it. I hate that I'm like constantly processing emotions, but that's, this is what it is. It's like, I listen to this audio and I'm like, huh. They really did give me that, my identity. They told me that I, oh, I didn't know who I really was and that there was shame in um, what I was not doing for the business. And, you know, I don't even have to hear that in, in an audio to like remember that if there was a month that I didn't do my PV requirements, I didn't purchase the product, um, that I felt ashamed because they would have everybody who did their PV stand up and anybody who was showing the plan three to five times a week stand up. And so they were, they were recognizing all the people who were doing what they were supposed to do in business. Whereas the people who were not doing or not, you know, producing those results, there was shame. And the thing is, is that like, I think in a non-Christian setting, you wouldn't really feel shame. You'd just be like, oh, bummer or you might feel like competitiveness but you wouldn't feel like like you were ashamed of not doing what you were supposed to do and so when I when I refer to this as like a religious thing it's not because I think that that's how Christianity is and it's certainly not how I think that God actually intends for for things to be I mean the whole reason Jesus came was to release people from shame. Like the whole reason, literally. And I'm not a religious leader, I'm not a pastor. I have to disclaim that like all the time because literally I don't want you to be like, well, Sarah said, and therefore I have salvation. Like, no, 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 <laughs> get counsel. But, um, but that's, I've, Jesus came to like free people. Jesus, the, the word gospel is is literally termed like good news. That's the translation. And so the fact that when you wrap up Christianity or when you wrap up God and religion with something that is not good news, you are really doing damage to the mission of like Christ. Um, 
And that you will be held accountable for, I think. I don't know, but I think you might actually face some consequences for that. Um, so I just am like, I don't know, I'm thinking about this audio and I'm thinking, dang, yeah. Hmm. And unfortunately, people who are in the Amway LTD business and who are not on their guard, they are absorbing that message. They are just kind of like letting that be woven into their self description, their self identity, um, their self image and self worth. And, um, it's no wonder that when people leave Amway LTD, they completely lose their sense of like focus and identity and, um, value and they don't even know what's really like worth it anymore or what they're worth or what value they have to add to people and if it were really about investing in people um and it wasn't about materialism then why conquest for a business in the first place why include amway and amway products in the first place now number one I'm not convinced that all of the Amway LTD organizations are actually selling products. When I was in, we were just purchasing our products and reporting it as customer volume. So that's what makes it truly a pyramid scheme. That's how that's how some uplines choose to operate it as a pyramid scheme. Um, I'm not saying that all of Amway is. I've clarified this often. But um, if if it really is about investing in people, if this is really about eternal kingdom work and about reaching people and, you know, showing them their worth, then why is the first thing that you present to them a financial plan? If it's about investing in people, wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to just mentor them just for the heck of it? And when they leave Amway, when they stop sewing soap, then why is it suddenly not about investing in people? Or those are people that you're not able to invest in because they've turned their back on God's calling on their life because they're no longer selling soap. I mean, these are the things that now I'm looking back on and I'm really doing like deeper work on like this is no longer just anti-MLM. This is no longer just... Um, let's talk about the business plan. This isn't about, um, you know, <laughs> just sleazy recruitment tactics or anything like that. The kind of stuff that I'm thinking about in terms of MLM and then in terms of like my own personal life, which is more on like the Sunday videos, are deep identity stuff. It's deep, like, who are you as a person and what do, like what makes you matter? People tell you that you matter, but why? Because you're going to die eventually and people will forget you ever existed. So why do you matter? And I'm sure that the reason that you matter is not based on how much volume you can create in an Amway business, not based on how many people you can recruit in a very sly and shifty way. That is not where your mattering comes from. So, I, and I don't know what it is. I, I, I really can't tell you why you matter. I really have faith that you do, but I, I can't really tell you why um, without knowing you. <laughs> but your life makes such a bigger impact than what you do for work or what you do for pleasure. Your life is connected with so much more than how much income you produce. And man, <laughs> it's sad that we look to other people to tell us how much we're worth because we can't see it in ourselves for some reason. And, you know, that's maybe some of our brokenness. Um, but I really hope, and, and this is why it took me a really long time for me to like even start recording this. It literally, it's been like a three hour process at this point. Um, because my heart breaks for people who hear this and believe it. 
Like my heart really does break for people who think that their real self, their real identity is found in the margin of shame. And to get rid of their shame, they have to do more for their multi-level marketing business so that they can elevate their upline's income and their upline status. That is heartbreaking to me because people are worth so much more than that. And if investing in people means lying to them about what you're actually in and what you're actually about, if investing in people means just trying to get them to invest a little bit more of their money and a little bit more of their time, bringing people around this business so that more people can give their money and their time for your gain, that's it, it, that's so twisted. So I'm sorry that this turned into more of a rant and it, it's really not organized, but I got to get this out somehow and I don't see it improving. <laughs> like I don't see my <laughs> communication skills really ramping it up. So I figured I would just turn on the camera and let you know that today, <laughs> hmm, not doing well in the anti-MLM front. I do have more audios that I would like to react to. At this point, I'm kind of over Amway LTD. I really am. Um, if you want to share my videos, please share them and get the message out more. I personally don't know how much more I can harp on Amway LTD. Um, not because I've beaten a dead horse because I think that as long as they are operating, people need to be speaking out against them. But personally, what I'm saying is that I will probably listen to the audios and then convey what the audio said and dispute what the audio said, but kind of in this format, but I don't know how much more I can actually like listen to them on camera. Um, because it really messes me up. This is not, um, it's not okay. And the more that I discover of how much I was like really damaged and how much they took advantage of me, the more that I actually see that's like, man, they really did. They had my whole heart. They had my whole identity. They told me what kind of personality I had and I couldn't even refute them because I just kind of submitted to whatever they said. And the fact that that is the truth that I am like realizing, I don't know how much I can actually like listen to them on camera without being really belligerent. So, <laughs> so I love you guys so much. I hope that you are finding how you matter in this world with everything that you do and everyone that you impact. I hope that you spread love, joy, and peace. I hope that you enjoy the life that you live and you put your all in everything that you do, not just what you do for income. Um, I just wish you a full life and a vibrant identity that you get to decide, you get to discover, and mm, and if you're a Christian, then I, I hope that you don't live in shame because that's not how you're meant to live. Okay.